How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another JS Drop from This Dot. In today's drop, we're joined by James Snell, who will talk about async context tracking in Node using the async local storage API. Like and subscribe for more weekly JavaScript content. Let's get started. Hello, all. I'm James. I'm here to talk to you about async context tracking with Async Local Storage API. It's an API that's been in Node for well, um, you know a couple of years now, but it's not one that a lot of people are all that familiar with. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration, just a quick walkthrough of how it works and why we use it, and you know hopefully it's something that you can make uh, make use of in uh, in your code. So let's start with the basic fundamental problem. Let's say we have a web server, um, you know, using something just very simple here. I'm not using any kind of framework like Express or, or Fastify here. Just you know, the, the regular Node Core APIs um, are enough to, to uh, illustrate the issue. Here we want to create a server, um, and it's going to go off and handle that request. It's gonna, you know, you imagine that this is doing something more interesting than just saying hello. You know, but you know, it's uh, uh, you know, we start up the server, we we pop up the request, we you know, say you know, uh, return hello world, and off we go. That in myself um, is, is not all that interesting. One of the things that people like to do um, is be able to provide some kind of tracking, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, maybe some logging in here where, you know, we'll say something like, you know, console log output, um, some information that is specific to this request. You know, maybe a session ID, maybe, you know, the, the uh, authenticated user's name. Um, you know, maybe there's some other interesting information that we want to be able to log as part of this request. Uh, so how do we do that uh, in a way that's, that's that's very efficient? Now, historically, what people have done uh, and what a lot of frameworks have done is attach information to the request object itself. So you might have something like uh, you know, request.context, and they'll attach some bit of information like you know the user or the session ID. Uh, this approach has worked, um, but it's very brittle. Um, anytime you are attaching content, you know, any kind of you know non-standard content to another API like this. Um, you run the risk of, of breaking things. What if Node decided to introduce its own context property to the request object, for instance? Uh, what if some other bit of code, you know, you know, had its own version of context that it added uh, to this? We end up with a lot of brittleness uh, in these APIs when folks start just randomly attaching things to other objects that they do not own in ad hoc ways. Uh, so while this would work, we could attach the information, and er everywhere response goes after that, that would travel along with it. It's not the best solution um, out there. It, 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 it's not the most robust. Let's explore a little bit more of, uh, of the problem here. So let's say we're just going to take a simple, something simple, just a session ID counter. So every request, we want to increment this counter so that every request has its own unique ID, uh, just in this case, just a form of a number. Um, and let's say that you know we're we're going to use this, uh, an approach to designing our application where you know we're not going to handle everything all in one place. We're actually going to call out to multiple functions, and maybe this is calling out to a, a sub module, maybe it's to some uh, framework, some piece of middleware, whatever. But we want that session ID to kind of travel along with the request wherever it goes. How can we do that? Well, currently, um, the only ways we have are you know, like I said, attaching it to the request object. Uh, or passing it along separately, like I'm doing here in this example, you know, where we're taking that session ID and attaching it as an argument to this request handle. Well, you know, what happens if we want to take that further um, and you know have that you know uh, uh, that that information propagate down through more complex parts of the application? For instance, here, you know, you know, we added another uh, function, this do something else, right? Uh, where we also need that session ID. Um, and you can imagine it's doing anything, right? Maybe it's doing some logging. Maybe it's fetching some data from a database. It doesn't matter what this these other functions are doing. You end up having to cascade um, that session ID down through all of the arguments, through all of the uh, functions, everywhere that you want this thing to go. Um, and that gets really difficult to manage over time. Um, what if you want to add new properties? Uh, to this that need to uh, to propagate down. What if you want to change the you know uh, the, the the type of all these? Um, there's a lot of of detail that goes into um, uh, a complex detail that goes into propagating this bit of uh, of information down. But what if there was 
a better way of doing this, a more efficient way that actually would flow not only um, you know, through calls like this, but through promise continuations, right? Um, uh, timers, right? Um, you know, an asynchronous database request or an asynchronous file system request. Uh, all of these different ways where you can, you know, do something now, schedule uh, a, a bit of activity, and then you know, continue on later on. You want this information to flow along with that, um, without having this complex, you know, uh, you know, task of, of passing it along yourself, or uh, this brittle way of just bundling it on to whatever are, is already getting passed down. Uh, so that's what the uh, async local storage API. Is intended for that's why it was added so let's take a look at an example of that all right so uh async local storage was added to node it's part of the async hooks um, api this was added back in i think node uh version 13 so it's been around for quite a while we're already on node uh, 19 now so it's been a, a number of years um it just recently became stable i think last year um but it's you know it's there it's something that you can use not a lot of people are familiar with it um, or, or, or recognize that it's there, or even if they've taken a look, they're not quite sure what it does or what it's for. Here's what it's for. Uh, notice here, um, we create a single instance of this async local storage at the, the kind of the root level of the application here. Um, uh, this is you know kind of a global, you know, nothing in Node here is global scope, but this is this is uh, you know as global scope as, as it needs to be here and, uh, for this example. We still have our session ID uh, counter. But instead of passing that session ID along uh, through all of these functions to handle requests and do something else, what we're going to do instead is we're going to take this special session ID run. So session ID is our async local storage, right? There's only one instance of this thing. We're going to call this run function. We're going to pass it the value that we want to cascade and propagate down, right? And then we're going to uh, call our function uh, that needs to actually handle a request within that uh, uh, the scope of that run. And notice what happens, you know, handle request. We don't need to know anything about the session ID there. We don't have to pass that down. But when we get to do something else here, right, um, all it has to do is call session ID get store, and it just works. Now let's take a look at, the, you know, uh, at, at this uh, running. Okay. Just, so you can, just so I can prove to you that it works. So here, if I'm going to do a curl request to localhost 8080, I'll get a hello world zero, right? So we see right here, we're going to get, you know, hello world, and then we're inserting the value of this counter that we're, um, right. so every time I run this, that counter should increase. So we get one, two, three. Every one of these requests is getting a new, uh, a new value uh, here, and it's coming from that counter right there, okay? So with this very simple approach, yeah, we didn't have to cascade everything down, right? The the implementation of async local storage ensures that in whatever execution context, which I'll explain in a second, whatever execution context we're in, the value that is stored that we're you know that we entered with at the top is what we'll get uh, uh, you know uh, later in that execution context later on when we actually want to retrieve that value. It ensures that that value remains coherent and consistent wherever we want to access it. So let's complicate the example just a little bit further. All right, let's add, you know, in, in this, this example, you know, our function, you know, handle request and function do something else. These are synchronous functions, right? So that we're just calling some synchronous functions. There's nothing asynchronous here at all. We're basically just call one function, call another function, call another function. Let's add some asynchronous to, uh, processing to it. Here, it's almost exactly the same, okay? But we change handle request and do something else into async functions. Right. Notice still in handle request, we have nothing there about the session ID uh, that's getting passed down. It doesn't need it. Uh, so, you know, we don't have to, to, to propagate it there at all. But when we get into do something else here, you know, you see that, okay, this is an async function, right? Um, we're going to call first as we enter it, waiting for uh, session uh, ID gets stored. So we're going to print a console log saying, okay, we're waiting for this request. And then here we're just kind of faking some asynchronous activity where we're setting a timer uh, for for one second. Uh, you know, so the system's going to sleep; it's going on up and, and and do some other things, waiting for that uh, timer to expire before it actually continues and responds to that request. And note that when it comes back, right, it's going to get the right value here. 
Now, what happens in this case, however, when you have multiple concurrent requests coming in at the same time, right? Um, is it going to see the right value? What is the value of session ID get store at every single request? So let's run this and let's check, all right? So curl, I don't know if, if you may not be familiar, curl has a way of sending multiple requests at the same time. So we're gonna do parallel immediate. We're gonna send two requests here at the same time. And notice over here, we got waiting for zero and waiting for one as the two requests came in in parallel, right? We hit the do something else and it starts, you know, and notice that for each one of those, it has the correct value for session ID get store. And then when we get our responses back after one second each, we have the hello world one and, you know, hello world zero and hello world one. So the correct values of get store um, um, you know, we're, we're selected here and do something else, even though both of those were waiting at the same time and those requests were overlapping with each other. That is accomplished by having separate execution contexts for each one of those promises. Um, and here's what I mean by an execution context. So if we just kind of draw it out a little bit. When you first run a bit of JavaScript, right? Um, let's just say, you know, console log, hello. All right. The execution context that we enter into, um, I'm going to simplify this a little bit because it's a little bit more complicated under the covers. But you know, for the, for the purposes of this conversation, we're going to call this execution context one. Okay. Now let's say that I create a promise. All right. And I'm just going to do this create promise here. And we have our bit of code um, to, to resolve it. All right. The execution context here, because a promise, this constructor is executed synchronously, right? The execution context here is still one. Okay. However, if I add a promise continuation on here, this then, right? Once this promise is resolved, right? And then that promise then is invoked, the execution context here is going to be is going to increment to two, right? So there's there, there's a separate scoping mechanism that occurs, um, uh, and a separate ID that occurs every time one of these um, asynchronous tasks are created and scheduled. So imagine things like a promise or a timer, um, or you want to read from the file system. Anytime you start an asynchronous activity in Node, uh, you are creating a new context with one of these identifiers associated with it. Now, when you create a new context, it inherits the scope of its parent, right? So when we are running one bit of code and get, you know, async local storage, get store returns a value of one, right? Um, when you create a new promise and when its continuation fires, it will inherit from that parent scope of whatever was running when that promise was created. Likewise, when you set a timer, it will inherit the scope of whatever uh, was running when it was created. So that when that timer, the the or the you know, timer continuation when it fires, that the functioning passed to it, when the uh, uh, promise uh, then fires, it will see the same value of whatever that async local storage was storing in that execution context uh, when the the promise or the timer was created. Right, so that's what we mean by propagating this, the, this scope down. So when we go back to this request here where we session run and we are running these things in parallel, when this request handler is invoked and we, we tell the session to enter, you know, to run with a particular value, we are storing that value in that scope and then calling handle request, right? And inside handle request, we're creating these promises uh, it's actually this one. We're creating these promises, right, within that scope. So they will inherit that value of the uh, of, uh, of the async local storage uh, counter at that time, All right? So with that value propagates down, uh, and we don't actually have to do anything to ensure that it's that it, that's propagated. Now, one thing you will notice: the session ID value does have to be visible to this function, right? To this do something else, which is why we declare it here at this top level. That is the one function, no, the one value that you do have to make sure stays in scope 
so that you can retrieve that value that is stored. So um, a much more uh, robust model, um, uh, you know, as long as you can make that async local storage uh, value visible, right? You can have multiple asynchronous tasks operating concurrently that capture um, their own distinct values for, um, you know, for the values that is, that is stored. Uh, that propagates down through promises. It propagates down through timers. Uh, any async activity that you perform in Node, uh, you, know, you, you know, this async local storage API will ensure that that value gets, uh, um, uh, um, you know, is available wherever it is that you need it. Now, this is a complex topic. There's a lot here. There's actually quite a bit more to this API. Um, I encourage you go check out the documentation um, on nodejs.org. Um, uh, you know, take a read through it. There's another class there that is, is important called async resource. Um, it's another one of these, uh, you, know, you know, very useful utility methods that, it, that, that, that pairs well with async local storage for more complex use cases. Definitely encourage you to go take a look at that and, and kind of dig in on those details. Um, and one thing, um, you know, this async local storage, it's not just limited to Node. Um, an implementation of it is coming to Cloudflare workers soon. Um, um, I, you know, we're not sure exactly when or if it'll come out by the time this video um, hits. I don't know, but it, it is coming. And hopefully we'll see it in other platforms as well. And there's even some um, um, some work uh, on in uh, TC39, the, 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 uh, the committee that, defines JavaScript itself, is looking at implementing uh, a, a version of this API directly in the language. So it might be uh, kind of coming there as, as well. So anyway, I hope that was useful. Um, I hope you're able to make use of async local storage in your own applications. As always, feel free to reach out um, if you have any questions. All right. Thanks all. Hope you have a great day.